This little device right here, as you undoubtedly know, is a fidget spinner. Normally not good for much else except uh, fidgeting. But what you can also use the fidget spinner for, and that's one, uh, what I want to talk to you about, is demonstrate a few very fundamental properties of visual perception, of how we visually perceive the world. Now, the first thing that I would like to demonstrate is a, a very simple a phenomenon called second order motion. And you can actually demonstrate that very easily with the, with the camera. And it goes as follows. So here I have my fidget spinner. And then I rotate it, not too fast, a little bit like this. So I'm rotating it actually clockwise, right? You saw me rotate it like this. But now on the camera, what you will see is counterclockwise rotation, right? Let me do it again. Oop. And now actually I'm rotating it really quickly clockwise and you see it moving kind of subtly counterclockwise, right? Right now you're perceiving very clear uh, second order motion. So second order motion is a, is a perception of motion that is not actually in the stimulus, right? The fidget spinner is rotating clockwise, but you perceive it as rotating counterclockwise on the camera. Now, why does this happen? In the case of a camera, that's actually very easy to explain because it has to do with the fact that the camera, it does not uh, record video continuously, but samples the image with a particular frequency, right? This camera, my camera, uh, records, I believe, with 24 frames per second. So what happens if at frame one, the fidget spinner is like this, and then at the next frame it has rotated so that it's like this, and then at the next frame it's rotated so that it's like this, etc., etc. Then what you will get is that the, even though the fidget spinner is rotating this direction, for the camera, due to this uh, periodic sampling, due to the fact that the camera takes snapshots 24 times per second, it will actually seem to rotate in the other direction. That is called second order motion. And it's, it's, it's quite nice, it's quite compelling, but it makes a lot of sense, right? It's not very surprising. Now, what is very surprising is that second order motion also exists in the real world and not just on camera. So if I take a fidget spinner, I spin it like this and I look at it, you on the camera will see a very clear second order motion. That is not surprising. But what is surprising is that me, while I'm looking at this fidget spinner, I also perceive a second order motion, not the identical to what you're seeing, but I also see, right now I'm perceiving a slight counterclockwise rotation. Now it is becoming uh, clockwise. I see a motion that is not there because what is actually is there is a fidget spinner rotating way too rapidly for me to see clockwise. So what does it mean? What does it mean that we in the real world with the real fidget spinner and not just on camera can also perceive the second order motion? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, and I don't think anyone knows. I think it's a mystery. But what it might mean is that also in real life, our visual system, just like a camera, takes snapshots with a particular frequency. So that our visual system, just like a camera, is not continuously perceiving input but is perceiving input with a particular uh, frame rate, you could say. Probably a much higher frame rate than a camera, but still there is a particular rhythmic sampling going on. And that would be one explanation of why we can actually perceive uh, second order motion in the real world. Right? And another probably an example that you're familiar with uh, of second order motion is if you look at the wheels of a car and the car starts to, 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 to drive, then of course the wheels go, also go too fast for you to see. And then at some point you will act, sometimes actually perceive a second order motion of the wheels of the car in the opposite direction. And again, that might have to do with the fact that your visual system is rhythmically absorbing that information. I'm not sure it's possible, but whatever it means, it, it does tell us something very fundamental about how the human visual system works. Try, try it with the real fidget spinner. Now, the second trick that I want to demonstrate with the fidget spinner has to do with eye movements. So again, uh, take a fidget spinner, a real fidget spinner. This you cannot really demonstrate on the camera, so you have to do it with an actual fidget spinner. And you make it rotate really quickly. And then you make an eye movement to the fidget spinner, away from it, to the fidget spinner, away from it. So that's what I'm doing now. Right, so I'm making eye movement away, toward, away, toward. Now, if you do that, what you will perceive if the fidget spinner spins at a particular frequency is that the Normally the fidget spinner is too fast for you to perceive it clearly, right? But then when you make an eye movement into it, it will suddenly seem to freeze. It will suddenly pop out and you will suddenly quite clearly perceive, for example, one of these black rings, right? So even though normally the fidget spinner is too fast for you to see it, when you make an eye movement, it suddenly sort of seems to freeze. Now what happens there? That again is quite easy to explain, but it's quite cool. So what happens, I think, 
is that uh, the fidget spinner, for example, rotates counterclockwise really quickly, way too quickly for you to see. But then you're making an eye movement also from this direction. And at some point, the velocity of your eye movement will match this velocity, so the speed of your eye movement will match the speed with which the fidget spinner is rotating. And then the speed of your eye movements and the speed of the fidget spinner will cancel each other out. And suddenly the fidget spinner will be stabilized on your retina, right? So you will have a stable visual input of that fidget spinner and it will seem to pop out, right? So normally your eyes move way too quickly in order for you to see something while your eyes are moving. And also normally the fidget spinner moves way, for, way too fast for you to see it. But if both your eyes are moving really quickly and the fidget spinner is really quickly, the two cancel each other out and then you suddenly see the fidget spinner, but only during the eye movement, right? So it is a demonstration of being able to see quite clearly, actually, while your eyes are in motion. Again, I think a very uh, counterintuitive and a very fundamental property of uh, the human visual system. So these things are, right, so these things, in order to experience this, you really need an actual physical fidget spinner. So I would say they are everywhere nowadays. So try to get your hands on a fidget spinner and try it out and experiment, experiment a little bit with uh, human visual perception. Thank you very much.